Hello everybody, we're here today with another video where we're going to talk about business valuation approaches. All the approaches that we're going to talk today share this fundamental truth. If there is nothing in it for the buyer, then they're not going to buy the company. <coughs> there are three main approaches to business valuations. Assets, comparative methods and cash flows. Asset methods like uh, book value, replacement costs, recreation costs, they all look at what are the assets of the company, the first one and how expensive it will be to recreate them, how much can I sell them for, and the third one, just the book value of the assets as they are registered in your balance sheet. Comparative methods look at similar companies and how much have they been sold for. So they use other companies as a proxy for the value of the specific company. And cash flow methods really look at the cash flow that can come from the specific company in the future, look at the risk that that cash flow has compared to other investments that you can do in the stock market, in other private companies, in other deals and really try to estimate what's the value that you should pay for in order to get a certain return on your money that compensates you for the risks taken. So we're going to go through each of them in future videos and give really the details and the specifics. But the most important thing is to understand why do you use more than one? You really want to get different views on the value of the company as each of these methods looks at it in a different way. And none of them is certain. The activity of business valuation is actually a very complex one, a very uncertain one, because the conditions of the company are uncertain and because there is a huge asymmetry of information in between what you know about what you're buying and what the seller knows about what they're selling. So which ones should you choose and which ones apply better to your company? Well, that depends on the specific situation. If you have a fast growing company where the whole value is in the future, uh, then you should probably use discounted cash flows. At the same time, if there are a lot of very, very similar companies and a lot of people have done the effort of valuing those companies in a very precise way, then you can probably use the similar companies approach. At the same time, if you think you're going to close the company, sell the assets, and that's going to be the deal and the transaction, then you should go for an asset approach. Uh, all of them have their limitations. All of them have their advantages. Uh, mixing them up is generally the best way because then you really get a complete picture of the value. So each of them has a different perspective on the value of the company. The asset methods, they just look at the assets. They look at what has been created and like, you know, it's generally a worst case scenario approach. Like if you really have to sell, if the company goes bankrupt, that's what I'm going to be able to sell the assets for. Uh, While well, if you think about the recreation costs, that's also an interesting way to look at the value of a company. How much would it take to actually recreate the same assets? And this is really interesting, for example, for companies that have no revenues, but they spent a lot of money in creating a very important asset, say a patent. Looking at multiples and comparative methods generally, you really try to see if there are similar companies. Generally, when you think about innovative companies that do a very specific thing in a very specific market, it's pretty hard to find comparable companies and it's pretty hard to find enough information about them to identify them as comparable companies. On top of that, it's really hard to find their valuation. So then how do you understand your price based on their price? Well, if there is enough information, it can be a good measure. Uh, it can be a good measure because it's based on the market, it's based on a lot of people, but it also carries a lot of wisdom of the crowd, meaning if you are in a bubble, this is just gonna increase the bubble. <laughs> Using the prices that other people set for an asset in a bubble, that means you're also part of the bubble, that means you're gonna have a high price as well, which might not be correct. So generally these comparative approaches, they look at comparable companies, they try to get some key metrics to compare them to your situation and then adapt the valuation from theirs to your situation. The main approach in this case is the multiple approach and we're definitely gonna have a video about that. Last but not least, the advantages of a discounted cash flow method are multiple, they are the main advantage of a discounted cash flow method is that it's really targeted to your company. You get into your accounting, you get into your projections, you get into your potential, and you really try to estimate what is that specific company value. This allows you to do a specific deal on a specific value, really understand that company and see if you are actually gaining or losing from that deal instead of having all the fuzzy information of, say, a comparative approach. At the same time, DCF, which is discounted cash flow, is actually widely used by sellers and buyers alike because it really aligns the two parties in the sense that we can really discuss about what are the projections. Is this too crazy? Is this too steep? Parties may not agree on the specific assumptions of a discounted cash flow, but then they can adjust those assumptions and discuss them and generally get to a fairer value of the company. People develop then specific methods for each of these approaches, but really the intuitions behind are always the same. 
In the next videos we're gonna get into the specific approaches, the specific methods and really understand the intuitions behind them, understand the formulas and understand why they are used and if you should use them for your own case. Thank you very much for following us and if you have any feedback please leave it in the comments so we can actually learn from it, we can read it, we can comment on it and maybe we can make a video about it and you know if you like these videos share them with other founders, other entrepreneurs, other CFOs and hopefully it will bring more and more people into knowledge of valuation and why not. Knowing your business value is super important.